Hi everyone, welcome back. So the seasons are changing, finally. It's getting colder in Toronto. It's like 13 degrees outside today. That's in Celsius, by the way, not Fahrenheit. And I am over the moon, overjoyed, over everything about it. I am so excited for this season. And this is the time of year where I start to change my makeup a little bit. So I was going through my makeup collection and I realized that there's a few palettes that I really love, but I've neglected them. So why don't I pull them out, use them for the fall. They are a little bit more fall appropriate and I just wanna talk about them. It's fun to talk about makeup palettes and I thought you might be interested to see what I'm gonna be reaching for throughout the next few months. So let's dive in. The first one is one that I like, but I feel like it's so same, same all the time. It's the Urban Decay Naked Heat Palette. And this is a beautiful palette. I love the colors in here. But I really struggle to create eye looks that look different at all. For whatever reason, the shades just always look the same. However, that being said, I do really enjoy the particular eye look that always seems to come out of this palette because it's very burnt orange, it's warm, it's like seasonal, like fall leaves kind of thing. And I need to use this more because I do really like the shades. I like the quality of the product, but I've not been reaching for it because I've got so many other palettes in my collection. And I didn't, I don't know. I feel like I didn't want to use this through the summer, which is maybe a little bit strange because people reach for a lot of warmer tones in the summer. But for me, summer is about like coral and autumn is about this kind of coloring. So I'm pulling out my Urban Decay Naked Heat again. I'm excited to be getting more use out of it because I mean, I love the packaging. I love the shadows in here and I've just not touched it in probably like a year. So happy to pull this one out again. So the next palette is one that's pretty much a copycat for the Urban Decay Naked Heat palette because the tones are very, very similar and that is the Tarte Tartlet Toasted palette. Now I picked this up even though the colors are very similar because I really like Tarte's Tartlet set of palettes. The Tartlet in Bloom was a shocking hit for me. I really like that. So I picked this one up because I love the colors. I wanted to support the fact that they were doing something a little bit more fun, a little bit more warm. And it's funny because I do feel like there is a little bit more variety in this palette compared to the Urban Decay Naked Heat palette, just because they're not as similar although you don't get as many dark shades. So maybe the variety is mostly because there's a lot more paler tones that you can mix with the darker ones. But the funny thing is that I pulled this out maybe once or twice after I bought it and then didn't really touch it after that, which is ridiculous because I love the colors in here. I love the formula. So now is the time for this palette. I'm gonna be pulling this out a lot more throughout the fall months just because I feel like the tones are perfect for the fall. I love, love this kind of like it's not quite cranberry because it's not red enough. So I don't really know what I want to call that shade, but it's like molten leaves. Doesn't make sense. But that color right there, it's called Flame, is beautiful. I think it's gorgeous, as with most of the shades in here, to be honest. But I've so neglected this palette in, how long have I had this? Probably a year, it's ridiculous. But I'm excited to be using this more now. I'm gonna take all of these palettes that I'm talking about and put them like directly in front of my eyes on my vanity so that I reach for them more often. So yeah, it's gonna get more love. The next one was limited edition for holidays 2017. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Prism palette. And I picked this up because I love modern Renaissance and then I was so deflated over subculture, but they said that this formula was the same as modern Renaissance. So I was like, okay, well, subculture went back to the store, but I feel like I need another ABH palette in my life. So I picked this one up, but it's such a weird palette. The quality is good, but the shades, are all over the board. I did a review on it a year ago and I did like the palette, but after that review, I can assure you that I have not touched this once. And it's just because the color selection is freaking bizarre. If they hadn't laid it out this strangely, I think it would have been easier to work with. Like if they put the lighter shades on one side and the darker shades on the other, it would have made more cohesive sense. But every time I look at this palette, I'm just like, what do I do with you? Like it's, it's a bit of a mind bender to look at this thing and be like, okay, I gotta put a look together. So I've just avoided it because there's nothing in this palette that makes me think that it's easy to use. The shades are beautiful to apply. The pigmentation is good, but the, 
the layout is just so unappealing. So there's a lot of colors in here that really make me think of autumn, so I wanted to reach for it. There's a lot of orange, a lot of orange. Like Saturn, Eternal, and Eden all fit into that orange category. And then I mean, you've got Pyramid, Sphinx, Parallel here that are all like golden, warm browns, or straight gold. So I think this is gonna be fun to use, but it's a challenging palette. Not for the quality of it, definitely not, but for the shade selection and how they're laid out. It's a struggle to put together looks with this just because when I look at it, I don't see anything that goes together aside from like this orange and that yellow and that's pretty much it. So I wanna get some use out of it just because I bought it and I know I did enjoy the quality of it, but like, oh, the layout. I just, I hate the layout on this thing. So the next palette is Oldie But A Goodie, and this is the original Too Faced Chocolate Bar palette. I was so pumped to get this when it first launched, and I did get it when it first launched, you can tell because it's the thicker packaging. And I really enjoyed it, but I haven't gone back to it a ton over the years. And it's probably because the shade selection is a little bit more muted. I like my colors generally more than my neutrals. So I haven't reached for this much. I felt like it was really a Christmas palette, to be honest, because there's so much like cranberry, eggnog-esque colors in here. So I feel like I've used this a lot over the holiday season, but not a lot throughout the fall, even though I feel like the colors are very autumnal. So I want to pull this out more. I love the chocolate bar formula. This one is definitely my least used out of all of them at this point. I love the semi-sweet chocolate bar palette, even though they've discontinued it at this point. Ugh, that pains me. But this one's really good. I just need to use it more because I loved it when it came out. It just like all my other palettes I'm talking about in this video, I just stopped using it. I neglected it and I want to use it more. I love the scent of it. I love the formula. The colors are great and I'm happy to be using it again. I mean, I'm going to say that about every palette in this because I am happy to be using things I haven't touched in a while, but Too Faced always has a really, really big place in my heart. So. I'm happy to be using this one in particular again. <laughs> and the last palette I have to talk about is one by Tarte. So they did this in collaboration with Graveyard Girl. It's called the Swamp Queen palette and I think it's like two or three years old at this point. Now the packaging is really reflective. The mirror is enormous so it's kind of hard to hold up without blinding everyone but I'm gonna try. So it's a face palette with eyeshadows. I don't love the face products. The bronzer is way too orange for me. It's very, very difficult to use. And the highlighter here is very glittery and chunky, so it doesn't tend to look that good on. The blush is fine though. What I'm most excited about is the eyeshadows. I used this palette quite a bit when it first came out, but I've since forgotten about it. And I need to use it again because I love it so much. This top row here is like, a perfect eye look. I just love using, um, what do you call it? Hashtag SFS on the lid, putting a natural peach on the uh, crease, and then Dogman on the outer corner. It's a gorgeous look every single time that I do it. And the shades on the second row are another great combination. Honestly, they're, they're kind of laid out that you can just do a single eye look with each of them as a row. But I like that this one has some purple in it because the other palettes that I've chosen are very focused on warm neutrals and I needed something a little bit different. So the purples really help to flesh out this palette. I love the shades in here. I love how it looks. Uh, visually it's very appealing because I like when it goes from light to dark. So I always feel inspired by this palette. I've just not used it much. I mean, it's been a few years since I think I've pulled this one out. And if I remember correctly, this is when they first started scenting their eyeshadows. The eyeshadows didn't used to smell like anything other than like clay, which was not that appealing. But when I first got this palette, I got a whiff of the shadows and I was like, ooh, they started scenting their eyeshadows. So I think this was the one that started the trend. Might've been this one. Anyway, really happy to be using this again. I'm happy about using all of these palettes because they've just been so neglected in my collection. And they're not ones that I wanna get rid of either. Like they've made it through the cut over being decluttered a few times because I know I really enjoy them. But when you have like 100 plus palettes, it's not hard to neglect certain things even if you love them. By the way, if you're interested in my palette collection video, I will link that down below because um, that's a beast. There's a lot, a lot of eyeshadow palettes in there. Anyway, that's it. Those are the eyeshadow palettes I'm gonna be reaching for in the next few months, and I am very excited about it. So let me know if you're gonna be pulling anything out of your collection in the next few months that's a little bit different than what you've been wearing throughout the summer. Thanks so much for joining me today, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.